ever seen your brain? You think it's real? <laughs> I tell you right now, when you get Jesus in your heart, you know it's real because your life's going to change, amen? And uh, you'll see even the people around you will see a drastic change. But I tell you right now, the more God you, you can have all the God you want. You can just keep crying out to him and digging in his word. And he's got so many things for us we can't imagine. And I'm going to talk about something this morning that he wants to give everybody in here. Some of you's already got it. Some of you ain't. And if you don't have it, you can have it. And uh, by the way you get it is to pray out to God and ask God to give it because he loves to give gifts. Amen. Can you remember, remember when you was a, uh, you, your children were being raised up and they were little and uh, all of a sudden, you know, they wanted a bicycle or something like that. Didn't it make you feel good to get them a bicycle? You could do it. You could get them a bicycle. And, you know, I used to love to put that stuff together. Some of it, you know, race cars. I'd get up there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'd put that joker together for my boys, and I'd be in there racing that joker, you know. The daddies can have fun too, Ronnie. <laughs> it excited me, mamas and daddies, to be able to give our children gifts. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, it excites God Almighty. He has given us gifts, and we can have them. we got to ask for them, and we got to pray about them. we got to just ask God to give them, and he will. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm going to uh, preach something that's good, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. And uh, it radically changed my, 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 my life, I'll tell you right now. I'll give, I'll give you just a little testimony of who I was and what was going on in my life uh, uh, before uh, God got a hold of me and done these things for me. Hallelujah, praise God. And I have not arrived yet, but uh, praise God, I'm excited about continuing going forward with him. Amen. It gets better and better. And uh, there's nothing like praying and crying out to God and feel his presence. Amen. And uh, so we're going to look at some things this morning uh, that God wants me to minister on this morning. And uh, being this is a Pentecostal church, but I'll tell you right now, it ain't something you got to have. Uh, you, if you got salvation in your heart, you can, you're going to heaven just like uh, uh, everybody else, amen? And so it's exciting. But if you want more and you want to help do the work of God, you need power. And God said he'll give you that power. You just got to dig uh, in his word and find it. And, and when you start digging in God's word, you'll see that power. And you start praying to God and say, God, I, I want this. And if you want it, he'll give it to you because he wants to do that. I'm going to talk a little bit this morning, give you a little depth on some of this stuff about the facts about the gifts. Did you know there's nine gifts in the Bible that you can have as a Christian? I want you to know that. And uh, you can have it if you want it. And uh, I'll tell you uh, right now from experience, uh, uh, you know, some of them are just hard, some of them are more hard-headed than others, and I was. I was a... Uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. I was a Baptist uh, boy. There's nothing wrong with Baptists. They're great soul winners. They're my brothers, and I love them, and they love me, and we're going to heaven. Hallelujah. We're going to be in heaven and shout. But uh, when I was a Baptist, I, 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 just, I, was, I just couldn't live the life that I needed to live, okay? I needed to help, and I didn't have it. I couldn't read my Bible. I couldn't study. I'd come to church Sunday morning. I'd go home. Uh, uh, I'd take my Bible, never read it. I'd bring it to church. Oh, look good, you know. And so I would bring, I'd bring my family to church, and Sunday morning we'd listen to the preacher, and it sounded good, and I felt the power of God. But by the time uh, 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 the week started uh, uh, moving and going away, the power of God, I, I just couldn't hold on. I needed help. Amen? And uh, so I cried out to the Lord, and I started crying to the Lord, help me, Lord, I need help. And uh, so I'll tell you what happened. Praise God, I went through all kind of turmoil and stuff. I won't get into all of that, but I will tell you this. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I got delivered from demons. I got ulcers healed all in the same night. That's what happened to me, amen, hallelujah. And I got to shouting and praising God. And when I left that place, them people laid hands on me up at Channel 16. I knew when I walked out of there, I had something. I knew I had it, hallelujah, praise God. Went directly from there. Uh, to eat a pizza on my lost 25 pounds, eat the pizza, 
had ulcers, by the way, and they were totally healed. Uh, demons was cast out of me. Cancer was healed. Uh, I tell you, boy, I got a package that night, uh, but went straight to Myrtle Beach. Uh, got up the next morning, never done this before in my life. Uh, got up on the balcony uh, right around daybreak, and there were people, some jogging on the beach. Uh, I opened up my Bible. I started speaking in tongues. The fire of God came over me like I never had it on me before, and that word jumped out at me and got in here ever since it's been doing it. And people running down the beach saying, smell this dude up there on that balcony. Boy, I was up there on that balcony, I shout. I'm talking to God because he gave me language I never learned. Some of you in here's got it, some of you ain't. But don't feel bad. You just keep pressing on and pressing on. And you keep squeaking because you know what happens? The one that squeaks the loudest usually gets to squeak all first, okay? You keep praying to God and asking God to give it to you. He'll give it to you. I guarantee you just keep holding on. You keep pressing on to the, to the king, hallelujah. Uh, and we're going to look at here and see what God has for us this morning. We're going to look at some of the facts, uh, which is good. Uh, it talks about, we're going to get in 1 Corinthians. If you got your Bible, underline it. Look at it. Nine gifts of the Spirit. We're going to talk about every one of them. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we're going to look at them. Some of them, of the gifts of the Spirit, I'm going to break them down in categories. Some of them are mind gifts. Okay? Do you know that? And uh, some of them, praise God, are vocal gifts. This is vocal. I can use that gift anytime I want to. Because God gave it to me, and he's non-repentive, amen? Think about this. And uh, so, listen to this. And then we're going to talk about, we talk about vocal gifts. We talk about mind gifts. Mind gifts is the word of wisdom and knowledge uh, and discernment of spirits. Uh, we're going to talk about those gifts. And then we're going to talk about the vocal gifts is what? Prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, the interpretations of tongues. I've worked in those. I've worked in about uh, a lot of these, matter of fact, and, and some of uh, you here have too. We're talking about mind gifts, talking about vocal gifts. Then we're talking about working gifts. And what is working gifts? Faith. Uh, God gives you a, 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 a mount of faith, but sometimes you need faith to move a mountain. Something happened to you. Uh, I remember one time... Uh, uh, Roy, a good example, uh, a board flew out. He was trying to push a van out over there at his house. They were building their house, and big old tuba six uh, shot out from the, the van and hit him in the leg, and he was pretty much sure it was broke, and his fixing goes to Dominican Republic. And the the uh, the gift of faith started working on Roy. He kept claiming, I'm, it's not broke. Uh, uh, Satan, you ain't stopping me from going to Dominican, and I, I seen it work. One time we was in the Dominican and uh, the Dominican Republic, and uh, uh, we was going to go into Haiti. We've been in Haiti a few times, but this time we had the group and we was going into Haiti. Jenny, you was there, and uh, some of us and uh, uh, others, and uh, we was going across. Uh, we 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 went on the the backside of the Dominican Republic and the Haitian border, and it was no man's land, and so uh, we was going to go on into Haiti and. Uh, 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 there's a little creek down there, and the Lord at that time did not want us to go. We didn't realize it then, but I'll never forget. Rachel Posey was going across that uh, little creek. She fell. Sandra, you was there, and uh, she fell. And I, I know her leg was broke. I seen it, and we got her up, and you could see the knot and everything. We all started praying, and the act of faith come upon us, and her leg was healed. But we backed up after that little incident, and we realized we need to listen to God. He don't want us to go in right now. So we didn't go in. Amen? An act of faith. Uh, and you can go. Uh, sometimes you need that act of faith. And what is that act of faith? It's supernatural, isn't it? It's a supernatural gift, and you can have that. You can start praying to God about these nine gifts we're going to talk about here this morning and figure out which one you want, and you can get it. If you want to speak in tongues, you can get it. If you want to, uh, the, the gift of wisdom or knowledge, you can get it. Start praying. You know, I pray, Lord, give them all to me. I've worked in, in some of them, but some more are more prevalent in my life. But I'm here to tell you, you can have them. You can cry out to the Lord. And uh, supernaturally, you can work in these gifts. And what does these gifts do? It glorifies God, and it helps the body of Christ when they're needed. Amen? 
When they're needed, it helps the body of Christ. Hallelujah, praise God. I tell you right now, I, I, I praise God I can, we can come into church and we can get uh, uh, somebody speaking tongues and, and you know it's better to prophesy, but if you've got an interpreter or interpreter somewhere in here I can interpret that, this is good too because it's supernaturally that uh, person is speaking in tongues, talking to the Lord, and then the, and if it's a message to the church, then the interpreter, who is a gift, by the way, one of the gifts, uh, will interpret that message uh, to the church that will exhort the church, lift the church up, tell the church what's going on. That supernatural God. Amen? That's what we're talking about here today. Talking about mind gifts, uh, word of wisdom and knowledge and, and some of these things. I'll tell you right now, uh, God is an awesome God that we serve. And, uh, you know, uh, the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation. Uh, that is divine will and purpose. It's showing how to solve problems that may arise. Amen? That's, that's some of that right there. But let's go up here and look at the word first. If you got your Bibles and you want to remember this and you want to get in there this week and study it, and I, I encourage, uh, I challenge everybody in here. Uh, you Ain't none of us in here, I don't think, but one that I know, Jesus, he had them all and some of the other, uh, Paul, maybe some of them had uh, all of the gifts. I want all of them, don't you? i tell you right now, and what is that for? That edifies and lifts the church up. Uh, it's a help in the church, amen? Now, there's nine of them, but you get these scriptures I'm fixing to show you, and you get to study them. I'm working on one right now. I'm praying about it. I've worked in it some, but I want to work in it more greatly to glorify God and the people in the church, amen, the body of Christ. And uh, you, I challenge everybody in here, if you've got one, be praying uh, today. I want you to pick a nut now and start praying, God, if you get it. Amen. And if you don't have one of them, pick one out that you want and start praying. Because what is that? It's the body of Christ. And it edifies, it works, uh, and it helps uh, in the body of Christ. Amen. We need these gifts uh, down here now. Ain't going to need them when I get to heaven. I'm going to be with the Lord in my glorified body. Amen. Let's look right here and see what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. For to one is given. Now, these are gifts that God gives. This is above and beyond. Let me tell you, there's three baptisms I can talk about here this morning. The first baptism is when you get saved and you get Jesus in your heart and the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? You're baptized in the corporate body of Christ. Amen. You're a Christian. You get all the benefits. Okay? Then there's another baptism we can talk about. That baptism is when you get baptized, you want to be baptized in water. It's going to happen right here the 29th of October. We're going to baptize some people in water. Behind this screen is a baptismal pool, and we're going to baptize them. Because the Bible, the Bible says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I won't never forget the first time I baptized people. You know how Roy is. He just throws you right in it. We went in a village. And I think I preached. I did. I preached in that village. About 70 people got saved. Now, I'm here to tell you, I'd like to see that happen in our community, wouldn't you? We are in the Dominican Republic. Those people love God. They go to church every night. But uh, we was in that little village, and uh, I'll never forget it. We had to cross a little river to go across it and get in that little village and started preaching, and the power of God fell in that place. Seventy people uh, got uh, saved, and we bought a little grass hut, uh, made a church out of it. Uh, they going, we uh, uh, chose somebody that we seen to be a pastor. And anyway, we went down to the river, and the river was uh, getting it. Roy said, Rick. You and Bill Posey go down there and baptize these people. And Roy and Jimmy stood up here on the little ledge up here encouraging us on, yeah. And we was down there in that river, and this is I'm a rookie at this. This is the first time for me. And the river's running this way, and I'm a dunking them this way, and the river's running up their nose, and they're choking, and they're gagging, and hollering, and coughing. And I'm bringing them back up. I said, that's the way you do it, ain't Lord? And Roy and Jimmy give me words of encouragement. Rick, turn them around. <laughs> so I turned them around, me and Bill Posey, and we started dunking them. 
We dunk seven of them. Praise God. The Bible says in Matthew, uh, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what we do, and I give God praise for all of that. Amen. But that's water baptism. We talked about when you get uh, saved, you get in the corporate body of Christ, and you got the uh, Holy Spirit living in you. Amen. But I'm talking about another baptism that you can have as a Christian. As you see Paul talking in the book of Acts, I can go in chapter 19, uh, and uh, they come down and say, have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? And what, this is what the church said to Paul and them said, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Ghost and these were believers, okay? They were already Christians and they said, we hadn't heard of it, but we want it. And uh, they started laying hands on them and guess what? They started getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, amen? You can see it in God's Word. It says uh, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, it talks about, uh, uh, you know, it's for you and your children and your children's children. It ain't just for the early church then. It's prevalent today. God don't make no mistake, does he? Does he? If he did, I'm speaking in tongues, and it's supposed to be back 2,000 years ago. Uh-uh. Today. Amen? Think about it. The gifts are for each and every one of us today. Hallelujah. And I can show you uh, more and more examples. I don't have all those scriptures, and I thought about making two messages out of this, but we'll see what God says. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom and another the word of knowledge and by the same Spirit. To another faith by the Spirit and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. You see these gifts? There's nine of them. Let's go a little bit further in 10 here. And to another, the working of miracles, and to another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretations of tongues. You see those gifts? You got your Bible? Write them down. Study them this week. Look at them. See what God says. Man, you can. You got the Internet and stuff right now. You can call it up on your phone. You can see a lot. You can really study quick in a lot of stuff now. You know what I mean? You need to do that. I've worked in a lot of these. I won't never forget one time I went to the prison. Don't mean this wrong. I went to the prison. I was young in this Pentecostal movement, you know, and I was on fire for the Lord. And we went to the prison down there, and we were preaching the Word of God. Roy was preaching in cell block 109 or somewhere. Women's is 25 up here and 25 down here. And they was kind of rowdy. And uh, so Roy got to speak in uh, uh, the Word of God for 20 solid minutes. He walked up down there to speak the Word of God. And when he did, a peace come in that place, and they started listening. And while all that's going on, God gave me discernment. He gave me the sermon sitting there while I was going. I've seen things you can't imagine. And I'm saying, no. And I, I knew it in my spirit that it was real. And uh, the devil was bringing havoc in that place, okay? But anyway, what I want to tell you, Roy got through preaching, the power of God hit that place, uh, and he asked, uh, anybody want to be saved? Uh, and there were 25 cells up here and 25 down here, and it's a cement floor. We was on down here. We was locked in there, and, and all the girls there was two per cell they were in those little cells okay and i won't never forget roy I said anybody want to get saved if you want jesus in your heart like sister paula she asked that question and boy when he did hands shot out them bars hands was outside them bars shaking i want to get saved god exploded in that place salvation hit turned that place upside down God's an awesome God, isn't he? He can do those things because he's God, amen? But I'm telling you right now, you as a child of God, if you want to do the work for God that you want to do, I'm going to tell you, before I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't even testify much to nobody. I'd say, I'm saved, praise God. I give glory for saving me. I thank God for uh, taking me from that old wretched uh, life I was living and put me in this life uh, that I'm living for him now. But I want to tell you right now, uh, when the power of God gets a hold of you, He, if you want to be endued with power, the Bible says in the book uh, of Acts 1-8 that, that he will endue you, uh, endue you to power that... Uh, uh, from on high and that's uh, some of the power we're talking about is the baptism of the Holy Ghost now I'm going to tell you what happened I got baptized in the Holy Ghost uh, man I got to reading my word I never read my word I couldn't wait to get up in the morning and read my word and get it in me and I've done it for 32 years only missed two days I was unconscious then in a car wreck 
That's how good it is, y'all. That's how good it got to me. And I'll tell you this. It's awesome. And uh, God is an awesome God, and he loves us so much, and we need to get in God's word and cry out to God and ask him to give us this power we need. And what happened? This power happened. First thing what happens, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to live this Pentecostal life. My little grandma was Pentecostal, four foot high, four foot wide, and she loved the Lord Pentecostal. And she got a little bit of that in me when I was about 12 years old, pretty heavy, you know. But anyway, as I come in along here and I started growing in the Lord, you don't just get it and jump out. You got to dig, you know. For about two years, I dug. Like Roy, he, he got it. He dug, man, for about two years. Jeanette said he'd come home work and go in his room back there and praise and worship God and study. And uh, me too, that's what happened to me. When I got it, I started digging for about two years. Man, I was uh, pumping it in. Because God wants to use you and give you the power that you need to use it. So let me tell you one up. Right after that, uh, wasn't long after that, Roy said, Would you like to go to the Dominican Republic with us? And I said, Do what? I'm a redneck raised right over here on Durham Street, y'all. And uh, so uh, I said, uh, Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And the power of God hit me, and I said, yeah, and the finances came in. I didn't think I had the finances. I was raising my sons. And anyway, I went to the Dominican Republic. I won't never forget the power of God. That was my first trip, I believe, when I baptized 70 in the river down there. God did that. Amen. But I had power from him. I had power from God Almighty. Amen. God's an awesome God. If you want that power to do the work for him, get into his word and, and do it. And God, by the way, God wants everybody to have it, and he wants you to be empowered to, to do work for him. This is what we're talking about here, y'all. It's a power. It's supernatural. But this is real supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now let's go a little bit further right here. Let me ask you a few questions. We're talking about the mind the mind gifts, the vocal gifts, and the working gifts. Now, I want you to be thinking on during this service, too, which one of those you want. You want, you know, the mind gifts, uh, it works with the mind. It's talking about uh, a word of knowledge. This is a supernatural revelation of divine knowledge, insight uh, in mind and will and plans and stuff. You know, God will give you uh, wisdom and knowledge that you can't imagine sometimes. I'm telling you, God's an awesome guy. I'll tell you another thing happens to me a, a lot. The Lord, as I'm out in the yard or doing something, I'll run across a, something, a project or something that I don't exactly know how to do it or whatever. God just about every time shows me how to do it. It's amazing. I tell my wife. I said, just about every time God shows me exactly how to do it, and I do it. Just like he said, he shows me. He does. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, Discernment of spirits, supernatural revelation, insight into the realm of spirits. You detect them in their plans and read the minds of men sometimes. I'm telling you, it's a God thing. It's a supernatural thing. Amen. You can go deeper. Look at, look, investigate these things. Look them up uh, and study them and see. And, uh, uh, you know, look at these gifts. Uh, God wants to give you these gifts. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. This is mind gifts we talk about. And prophecy is vocal uh, gifts. Uh, it prophesies and, and it edifies the church, lifts up the church. Diverse, uh, uh, diverse kinds of tongues. I'll tell you about that right there. I, I, I used to go to uh, my work and uh, uh, I would pray. I had my, my, my glasses, my dark glasses on, you know. And I had 35 minutes when I worked in Spartanburg. Uh, I was living in a bungalow down here. And I would be driving to work 35 minutes, and I'd pray, and I'd shout, and I'd praise God. And I had them big glasses on, see, and nobody could see me crying. And I'd be going down through there, and I'd be shouting and praising God, you know. And I, they've been a lot of times in diversity of tongues. I started speaking in other languages uh, rather than my language God gave me. You know what? Y'all know what I'm saying? And uh, man, it's awesome. God's an awesome God. And uh, you're talking to God when this happens, y'all. And you can have it. Some of you know what I'm talking about, everybody here. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What is the purpose of this? To confirm the Word of God. That's what these uh, gifts that God uh, has given us, it confirms the Word of God. Let me ask you uh, uh, another question. 
who may have them, uh, just certain people. Every believer can have them. And I can show you that in the Word. Can you have all of them? Yes, Jesus had all of them. You can have all of them. You start praying and crying out to the Lord, you can get every one of them. Think about it. Can they be misused uh, in backslidden conditions? Yes, they can. We can see that in Ecclesiastes 2.9. Let me tell you about uh, the gifts that God gives you. They're yours. He don't take them back. God's given me the gift to preach. I know he has beyond a shadow of a doubt. He showed me in the word that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm supposed to preach the gospel. I know it. But if I was to backslide and go back out in the world, I'd still have that gift. He won't take it back. It's still there. God's giving you gifts. If you got in a backslidden condition, you still got that gift. He don't take it away. His desire and the purpose that he has for you, me to preach. And I know it. If I went in the backslid, his desire is to get me back and continue to do what he called me to do and the gift he given me. Amen. Now, I can go uh, deeper in some of this stuff, but we, we don't have time. Look here. Uh, some people say, well, if I get baptized in the Holy Ghost, will I get an evil spirit? Not if you're a true believer of God, you're not going to get an evil spirit, okay? You're going to get a spirit, though. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh, I won't never forget it. I, I won't never forget I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm just using me as an example to glorify God. We was over there at Johnny. His name was Johnny. had a church over there in Furman, huh? Johnny Siblings. He was over there in... Uh, Furman University, we was over there preaching. Roy's going to preach, I think. And man, I was new in this thing, okay? And, uh, you know, I had never been slain in the spirit. Many of you in here have been slain in the spirit. I've been slain in the spirit many times. When I'm down there, I'm humble to the Lord, and, man, he's working on me. But uh, I had still had some pride in me, okay? God don't like pride. you got to get rid of pride. you got to humble yourself down and cry out to the Lord. And so... I still had uh, 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 had still had some pride in me. Let's let's, let's tell it like that. And so, uh, Roy was preaching powerful with places filled up with people. I won't never forget it, you know. And the power got hit, and Roy said, "Come on!" Uh, they the both preachers said, "Come on down. You want the spirit of God to touch you and everything, you know." And I'm sitting up there in my chair, and I said, "Well, Lord, I'm gonna go down there, but I ain't gonna be." slain in the spirit unless I know it's you. I ain't going to do that now. I'm not doing that. I'll go down there and get prayed for, but it ain't going to happen to me. Pride, that pride jumps up there sometime, Woody. Gary. Marty. I'm just picking out some, you know, we've all, us men's had it, ain't we? <laughs> but anyway, I was down there and I went down there, I went pouncing down there, man, and they got to praying for me and Oh, bam, man, I hit that floor cold. I'm laying there. I'm down on that floor, man. I said, man, something knocked me down. What is this, you know? And I realized, man, I got slain in the spirit. And I said, okay, Lord, I believe it. It's real, you know? And so I'm laying there like this, and I said, I'm going to get up. <clears throat> and God said, not yet, you ain't. <laughs> and I'm laying there, and the power of God's hitting me, and I'm, okay, okay, God, I've had enough. I'm going to get up. Mm, mm. He ain't through with me yet. This is God. I know it's real. And uh, I won't never forget uh, that same service. Mike Thompson was with us. And Mike Thompson seen all that going on. He's a good old bona fide Baptist boy. <laughs> and he runs out of there and jumps in his car and said, I ain't going to go down there. I'm out of here. You know, he jumps in his car and he runs down the street and a stop sign and a power guard hit him and said, get back in that service right now. I'm just telling you my way, okay? So Mike turned his car around and he come back in that service. He come running down there to get prayer. And I don't remember if that time he got baptized in the Holy Ghost or what, but uh, he didn't, I don't think. But he obeyed God. He came back because guess what happened to Mike? He got something that God wanted for him. 
I'm talking about supernatural power, y'all, that you can have. Now, let's look at another one. Are the gifts permanent? We talked about that. And uh, 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 are they permanent? Yes, they are. In Romans 11, 29, you can, you can see some of that. And uh, how do you receive some of these gifts? By faith and by prayer. That's how you, you got to. You got to believe them, and you—I mean—believe in it. You got to pray, pray to God, and ask God to, to to give you these things, you know. And He'll give them to you. I know. I prayed, and and I won't never forget. To, it's awesome. I when I humbled to the Lord, it took a lot to get me where I was. I humbled to Him that night, and they laid hands on me. I told God, God, you can kill me. I don't care. Whatever you want to do now, God. I go. You ever been there? You ever been that far? Sometimes God will put you. Sometimes we're hard-headed, ain't we? Won't listen. That's where I was at. I said, God, you can kill me. I don't care what you do. But I'm yours 100%. And boy, when I told him I was his 100%, the power of God come on me like never before. And the first thing that I had to do, sitting there as they were laying hands on me and praying for me, the first thing I had to do to get it right with God so I could receive what he had for me, God said, you got to forgive some people. I had some people that had hurt me when I was a young teenager, whatever, and I had been dwelling on it. And it was like, God, this is me, this is my experience. You see a big old TV screen? It was like the TV screen. I'm sitting in that chair. They're praying for me, and the power of God's working on me. It flashed up. So-and-so, you got to forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. So-and-so, another flashed up on the screen. I forgive them, God. I forgive them, God. I choose to forgive them, God. I need your help, God. I don't want to forgive that one, God. Would you help me forgive that one? You been there? And God helped me, and I forgave them because I spoke the word. I choose to forgive them. And God bless them, bless them. And when that happens, you takes it off of you. That's another scripture, uh, 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 something I used to love to preach about, the tormentors. I used to love to preach about that, but they was on me for seven and a half months. They left. Power, anointing, supernatural, y'all. That's what we're talking about here this morning. And is this for you? Yes. Is it to confirm the word of God? Yes. Who can have them? All believers. Let's look at some of the scriptures a little bit more. Amen. See what God said. First Corinthians 13, 1 and 4. If you get all of these gifts, y'all, if you get every one of these gifts and you work and speaking in tongues and doing that, if you ain't got love in your heart, they're of tingling brass. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? The bottom line here is you got to have love. You got to love your brother and sisters. You got to do that. If you don't have love, it says tingling brass. Let's see right here and see what it says. And though I bestow all my goods to I, I feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. So, you know, sometimes you and I as humans can get the root of bitterness in your heart. Amen. You might be going through the motions and some of the stuff, but you've got the root of bitterness in your heart. Mm. It's got to be pulled out. And the one who can do that for you is God Almighty. Amen. What does it say right here? And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Look up the word charity, love. Charity suffers long and is kind. When you become a Christian, you're going to start seeing some characteristics coming on you you used to not have. You used to not have some of these. But when you got God in you, you started having the, these things. Look at here. And, the, and, and, and uh, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity banneth not itself. It is not puffed up. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, sometimes you got to 
humble yourself and be there with the Lord because you might get a gift and you see them gifts working. Maybe it's through you. You might get a little puffed up and say, man, look at here. You better keep yourself humble to the Lord you get them gifts. Amen. And you better remember who's doing it supernaturally through you, God Almighty. And don't think yourself better than old so-and-so here has only got this gift, but I got three more. Ha, <laughs> ha. I'm the big cheese. Don't worry about that. We answer to God. That's who we answer to. He is the one who gives us the power and anointing to do works to glorify him, not self. Look here. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth him, that God in all things may be glorified, glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. If any man speak, let him speak. Look at there. Let him minister. The gift God gives you, use it. Use it. Amen. Don't. There's another one here that said something about here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, where's it at? Let me see if I see it. Uh, can gifts be neglected? Huh? You've been praying in tongues lately? You've been asking God to, uh, you know, to do to, to some of you here. Sometimes we might have a message in tongues and God comes on you and, and asks you to do, to uh, interpret, but you won't do it. I won't never forget. I, a lot of times the Lord come on some of the people in the choir back here. And I know you're supposed to give a, give the message out, but you don't. And the Lord comes on me. That's okay. I ain't got no problem with that. But I'm just telling you, don't neglect the gifts that's in you. If you speak in tongues, you pray with tongues. You, you're talking to God. Use them to glorify, amen, and to edify our king, amen. Think about it. Let's look right here and see uh, what it says. Let's go a little bit further right here uh, in the book. Why? Because we're one body in Christ, amen. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, look at here. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will he's the one who gives them amen jesus in matthew three eleven is the one that baptizes in the holy ghost that's what the bible says Woo! that's good baptizing the holy ghost endowment of power for service uh, jesus you can start reading and see some of that look at here look at first corinthians uh, 14 1 and 2 and 21 i believe i got that on there Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Prophesy is good, too. You know why prophesy is so wonderful? I'm asking God to give me more of that because it speaks English and tells you what God says, okay? Speaking in tongues is fine, but if you don't have an interpreter, it don't do the body no good, does it? Y'all see some of these things? Now let's look right here. And he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh unto, uh, not unto man, but who's he speak to? But unto God. For no man understand him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He's speaking to God. But now you pray when you in, uh, uh, speak in tongues, God give me the interpretation. I've been praying in my prayer life sometime. I'd be scared to get the interpretation. You ever been there? <laughs> but he loves us. He wants only what's good for you, hallelujah. Amen. Tw yeah, Ronnie got it. Thank you, brother. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues. Here it is, y'all look here. Men with other tongues and other lips. Will I speak to this people? It's prophesied that we're going to do this. Now look at right here. And yet, uh, for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Now I want you to look at uh, another one here. Wherefore, wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe. Y'all see that? When somebody hears somebody speaking in tongues, it's, it confirms, man, this is real. Look at this. Now, look at here. It says right here. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophecy serveth not, uh, uh, serveth not for them that believe not, but to them which believe. So you as a believer, when somebody prophesies in the body of Christ, and we want that, 
I want to hear what God said, don't you? Think about it. Let's go a little bit further right here. Romans 12, 3 and 8. Romans. One body in Christ. We talked about that this morning. Old foot, remember? And old hand. Look at here. But I say, though the grace, uh, uh, the grace given unto me to every man, for I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now I'm here to tell you, God's given every one of us a gift. Every one of you here, a child of God, you have purpose, you have uh, a gift. That, now the nine gifts is something you get after you become a Christian, okay? Now, uh, I'll tell you right now, though, God has given us gifts. Some of us are vocal. I'm a minister. I'm a pastor. That's, that's what God has called me to do. Some of you others here are in the gifts of helps. You're helping other people. Uh, you've lived a life that you can uh, testify to somebody else where you've been and what's happened to you and give God the glory. Everybody in here has a gift. Just like, you know, uh, uh, I've been a pastor when I was uh, the pastor in, uh, and I've done some of it here too, but uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the Greenwood down there, man, I cleaned the toilets. I done everything all the way up. But praise God, we got uh, people with different uh, gifts that are, are cleaners or helpers or witnesses or, or uh, pastors. or And then you got the gifts of teaching, preaching, prophesizing, the five gifts. Full ministry is in this church right here, y'all. And I'm here to tell you right now, we're everyone just as important is the one down here is the one over here to God. We're his. Think about it. In his body. Praise God. Look at here what the Bible says. Oh, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Y'all see that? And you can get in the five gifts of preaching, prophecy, and and uh, uh, preachers and some of that. So we being many are one body in Christ. And every one members, members one of another. We all after the same thing. You know, our Baptist brothers and sisters, our, our brothers and sisters, our Methodists, all of those people that where we meet at the blood of Jesus and salvation. But now some people have swayed from that. They is certain fundamental basic things that's got to be met, you know. Let's go a little bit further right here. See what God says. Having the gifts differ according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the uh, proportions of faith, or minister, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, there are some of them, okay, and or he that exhorteth, exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let's go a little further out here. Now look at here. Uh, this is what God said. You can't tear this out of the Bible. The skeptics, I want to talk to you. It says right here, and he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the great commission, isn't it? And right here, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be what? Damned. That's what it says. Let's go a little bit further right here. What does this say? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Is that what it says? You can't tire that out, can you? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 39, forbid not speaking in tongues. You can't tire that out, can you? Let's go a little bit further right here. And there's an order to all of it. Look here. They shall take up serpents. They drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Is that what the Word of God says? And a lot of us folks in here has been on Dominican trips. You'll go up against different uh, demons and stuff when you're on the field, and you'll cast out demons, and you'll do some of these signs and wonders we talk about. You'll do it here in the church too and around. Jesus done it all the time, didn't he? Are we any better than Jesus? Amen. Think about it, y'all. Let's go a little bit further. That's good, ain't it? 
Now, Jesus, we see the prophets prophesies about speaking in tongues three, 4,000 years ago. Look right here. Prophesies about this is the way it's going to happen. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Is that what the Bible says? And that was prophesied by Isaiah thousands of years ago, y'all. I like it, don't you? It's in here. You can't tear it out. Look at here. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, 39 to the skeptics. I dare you to tear it out. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophecy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Is that what the word says? 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Is that what it says? Can't tear that out. It's in God's Word. I believe God's Word from the front to the back. And I believe it's God's Word. That's my faith. That's my belief. I believe it totally. Amen. And that's what you got to do as a child of the kingdom. Look at here. Let's look at uh, who, who baptizes in the Holy Ghost. Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water, said John the Baptist, under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Is that what the word says? A lot of you's got that fire in here. You need to kick it back in, throw some wood on it. <laughs> All of us. Look at here. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now let's look a little bit further. How do you get this? Ask and it shall be given. Have you asked God truly from your heart, God, I want to speak in tongues, or God, I want to, to uh, be uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost or God I want uh, the gift of wisdom and knowledge or God I want the gift of healing have you asked God for that in your heart and mean it do you really mean it because you do he's going to give it what it say ask and it shall be given to you I like that word ask ask seek and knock just remember that ask seek and knock ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Lord, I want these gifts we're talking about here this morning. This is one I want, Lord. I want all of them, or I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to be endued with that power. I want that fire that your word talks about. Have you asked for other gifts? That's, that's all of us, too. Uh, if you're not working on all the gifts, ask God. The uh, gift that you want, ask God to give it to you. I'm asking uh, for, for more. Amen. Look here. For everyone that ask receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Is that what the word says? And these testimonies in here that's knocked and God has given it. Amen. Think about it. Ooh, I like it, y'all. Look here. What man is there you, if he has a son and asks for bread, will you give him a stone? If your child asks you for bread, you're going to give him bread. You're going to feed him bread, ain't you? You ain't going to give him a stone, are you? Look at here. And what does the word say? Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a serpent? No. If then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. That's good, ain't it? Y'all don't worry about them beans and that chicken. It's going to be okay. We want to do what God wants. Amen. Man, this is very important. This is powerful. God wants you to have these gifts. Did we just read it? What did it say? Ask, seek, and knock. Is that what it said? And I don't care if you've been up here ten times, you keep coming back till you get what God has. You keep pressing through till you get what God wants for you. Amen. 
I remember I prayed for my buddy, my hunting buddy, for 25 years. I love him, and uh, we'd, I'd get on him pretty heavy sometimes going down there hunting, and sometimes I'd leave him alone. But when God would press on me to press on him, I'd press on him. 25 years. Finally, I told him one day, I'm going to quit praying for you. I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. And I'll be doggone, that boy got saved. But you <laughs> joined this church, him and his wife. 25 years. So we don't give up, do we? Huh? Ask, seek, knock. God, I want these gifts. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want this gift of speaking in tongues. And I want it to be of you. I'm a believer. Amen. Look here. You know, supernatural power to believe, heal, is miracles. Supernatural power. It's in those gifts, and I've seen it work. I've seen it. I know it's real. And many of you here know it's real. You've seen it. I could get a bunch of you lined up here to testify. We might have to do that one night. Testify of some of the miracles that you've seen because of supernatural gifts that God has given you and I. Amen? Let's look right here at this next thing. Uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit, endowment of power for service. Y'all see that? That was my last scripture. Supernatural gifts. We talked about facts about those gifts. Now I'm going to ask you some stuff here. And I want you to be honest with yourself. It's up to you. You can have it or what. You know, some some of you got it, some of you ain't. And don't feel bad. Uh, you know, my wife prayed for baptism in the Holy Ghost for seven years, y'all. And she come up here and laid hands on somebody that uh, Roy or somebody was praying to give them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She started speaking in tongues. Seven years. But she kept praying and she pressed through. And just like my sister Paula had that wonderful testimony about that 90-year-old woman did not know Jesus was going to, going to be lost and go to a, a, a hellish damnation place. But she said, yes, I want Jesus. I want him. I'm going to ask every head be bowed right now. First thing I'm going to ask, is there anybody in here that wants to be saved, I want you to raise your hand because I'm going to pray for you. You really want Jesus in your heart. You want to know that you're saved, raise your hand, I'll pray for you. Anywhere in the house. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to get it cleaned up here. Every head bowed. I'm going to ask this. Anybody in the house that's in a backslidden condition, and you know you are, and God's knocking on your heart right now, saying to get it right with me. And you want to rededicate your life to God. Raise your hand right now and I'm going to pray for you. You want to rededicate it. Anywhere in the house. Anywhere on the internet. I, every head bow. Anywhere on the internet. Uh, if you want to rededicate your life or you want to be saved, ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. He'll do it because he loves you and God bless you. Now every head bow. Some of you have these gifts. Some of you don't. God wants everybody to have it. But if you're really sincere about it and you want a gift or the gifts or you want that power, endurement, with power, endued, endued with power, and you want it as an act of your faith, Come on up here. I'm going to pray for you, me and Sister Jeanette and some of us. I want you to come up here. Then we're going to say another prayer that's going to read really good. So, And I want everybody here this morning to pick out a gift that you want. I want you to start dwelling on it right now. You ain't got them all, but there's one that you want. I want you to dwell on it right now. I want you to ask God right now where you at. I want you to seek God on that right now where you at. 
I want you to not right now where you're at. Now I'm going to ask another question while you're doing that. I want everybody in here to repeat this prayer after me itself. Why don't you repeat it? Talk, you're talking to God now, you and God. And I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And, Father, if I got anybody in my life that I need to forgive, I choose to forgive them right now. Lord, I choose to forgive them right now. I speak it with my mouth, and I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll bless them. Because you've blessed me so much. And God, your word, I got to obey your word. It says, if I don't forgive, neither will you forgive. And Lord, I choose to forgive them, God, because I want to obey your word. And I do it in the holy name of Jesus, your son. Now, every head bowed. Are you asking? Ask again. Are you seeking for that gift? I want you to ask again. God's moving on some people right now. I know he is. I see him on them. And you know who it is. And I want to ask again, every head bowed. You got Jesus in your heart. And you know he's in your heart. If not, raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to know he's in your heart. Every head bowed. God's moving on some people. I see him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know when he started moving is when you said, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. I forgive them. They hurt me, God. They hurt me, God. They hurt me, God. But I forgive them, God. If you do your part right, he'll handle the rest. Ask, seek, and knock. Now, I'm going to ask another question. It's up to you. And like I said, you know, just don't feel bad. You just keep asking, seeking, and knocking. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, I want you to come because I want to lay hands on you like Paul and them did. They laid hands on them. If you've been asking, seeking, and knocking right here this morning and you have asked God to forgive you of your sins, I want you to come if you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you don't have it. I want you to come now. Don't be embarrassed. We're all going to stay here and wait. Nobody gets to go to, uh, let, let, let's, let's, let's honor that. Anybody, anywhere. Okay. I'm going to ask you another question. ask you another question I'm going to challenge you this week and by the way you can go home and be on your sofa and start speaking in tongues I'm going to challenge you I'm going to ask everyone in here to start seeking one of the gifts ask, seek and knock ask God to give it to you ask him to give it to you because he will because he's God, amen Amen. I remember I preached this message one time at the. Everybody said Amen. I preached this message one time in Leith, the women's prison, and I cried out to God. I cried out to God before I preached this message, but I cried out down there in Leith, in the prison, and they was pressing us to leave Leith. 
because our time run out. And I gave that invitation to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to show you what God can do and how quick he can do it. They were coming up and I was touching them. We were touching them. They were speaking in tongues. They were making, the guards making them get in a line to leave and they were speaking in tongues. I'll never forget it. So I'm here to tell you this morning, I know it's real and I know he's real. Every head bow. Father, bless each and every one that's here this morning. Thank you for the Lord, uh, for each and every one. God, I pray you bless each one in a special way, God. And I pray, God, that you'll give each one of us a new gift, God, a new gift that we hadn't been working in, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. We praise you and we worship you, God. Bless each and every one here this morning in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. Bring somebody back tonight. Now, listen, Robbie Strickland going to be here tonight with his wife. Y'all come.